tonight. Got it. Jesus. <laughs> Got it. Talk about going too fast. Tonight. 2000s English comedy action extravaganza. Enough. Snatch. Gets covered in film. Hey, Winkle Blue. What? Blue Periwinkle. Periwinkle Blue. Periwinkle <laughs> Blue, right. A shorn. A shorn, it's true. So 1998, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels comes out. Mm. Costs 800,000 pounds to make. Makes like 28 million. 28 million. And they say, you should make another movie. Here's 10 million. And he says, how about I make the exact same movie? And it it does okay. Not it's even a, close to Lock, no. Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Come on, so much dude. It's the same movie. movie. No, this, this this movie was not even close to as good as, as Lock, Stock. Is that right? You think so? Uh, no. Fuck, dude, that movie. I love Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Eight, eight heads in a duffel bag even is better than this one. That one's not Guy Ritchie. Oh, wow. How do you feel about Rock and Rolla? Either one of you guys ever see Rock and Rolla with Gerard Butler? I have not. No. Actually, pretty good. Actually, pretty good. Guy Ritchie, uh, famously dating Madonna at this point in 2000, mm -hmm. pays a million dollars to put Lucky Star in the movie. Good point. Um, eight years of marriage and one kid later, two kids later. Who cares? Russ, rate it and grade it. <laughs> Uh, this movie is hella fun. <laughs> I I had only seen this movie I think once before, and it had been years. And I just enjoyed it so much watching it again. Sonia loved watching it. Such a good time. I'm gonna give it an A minus, just for the good times. There's some things you can pick apart on it, but I hadn't had this much fun watching a movie in, in quite a while, actually. And we've nice. watched a lot of movies hmm. on this show. That's awesome. How about you, Joe? Did you have a rip on time? I mean, I've seen this movie. Uh, wasn't a huge fan of it the first time that it came out. Watched it with <laughs> subtitles this time around. Yeah, I didn't do that. Wish I would have. I uh, did. It really it, helps when Brad Pitt's on this movie. It made a lot more sense um, than the first couple of times that I've watched it. Because previously, when I tried to watch it with subtitles, it still wasn't right. Like, but this time it it was it was pretty well done. It's a, it's a B, B B minus yeah. B minus. I hey. I like Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels a ton more than this movie. Interesting. How about the Sherlock Holmes reboot? Hey, you know, <clears throat> I don't believe anything you say. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that's also basically the same movie. Yeah, it's all Guy Ritchie, uh, which, you know, don't Guy Ritchie's like got the, a style. I did it's like cool the, the Sherlock all. Holmes reboot with the RDJ. Yeah. How could you not? When he punches someone who's punching him in his punching hand and I mean, like fractures every bone in his wrist. Yeah, it's cool. it's it, not. Nah, it's the Sherlock Holmes we deserved. I guess if you want to watch. Robert Downey Jr. be Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, and Jude Lobby Watson. I mean, so now you're talking Watson. Robert Downey Jr. versus Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. Who can take who? And which one? Cumberbatch has I mean, the reach. Doctor Who versus Iron Man. I mean, where are we going with this? I mean, not Doctor I mean, Strange. In Doctor real Strange. life, that's right. I'm pretty sure Cumberbatch would beat Robert Downey. Cumberbatch. I think so. Cumberbatch. I don't know. I, I love think, how his name is never the same. I think RDJ <laughs> has some pain to pull on. He could, he could have a late round just explosion. Now you know those guys who are just like so fucked up that they can't really do anything. I think that's Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Charlie Sheen. What? <clears throat> this. <laughs> this, uh, this, this somewhat tracks well i love this movie i own it uh i i if this movie's on i'm i'm watching until one of my favorite parts is done and then i'll probably move on like if i catch it on tv or whatever uh love this movie i would also probably just give it a solid a uh think it's just if you want to watch a fun movie quick cuts 
and uh, also part of the whole intersecting story phenomenon that lasted, I say, a good six years. Uh, crash, maybe long traffic, Ocean's Eleven. Uh, no, Rent Crash. It's four stars. <laughs> That's a blockbuster, Joe. I got that. Uh, yeah, not not bad. But yeah, I mean, th- there were a ton of these Pulp Fiction where it's all these different little vignettes and they all have this little intersecting moment. Uh, Magnolia. Do you guys ever watch three hours long Magnolia? Yeah. I've once. never sat through it all. Once. Yeah. And then again, all intersects and then ting. Uh, this one, they just do it with a crime movie, uh, running scared, running scared, yeah, kind of a little bit babble, another Brad Pitt movie. Do you guys watch babble? Yeah, Yeah. that movie. I couldn't finish it when those kids were out in the Mexican desert. I was like, now I'm done. I think you said that because it came out while we were at blockbuster. It was highly acclaimed and it came out right around the time that other good movies came out like departed and everyone was talking like watch this watch that i watched Babel. i come back to work and i'm like hey ben did you watch Babel?" and he goes i gave up mm-hmm. yep wow you don't hear ben say that too often not when it comes nope. to a movie too stressful Babel's a rough a rough ride but yeah i don't really enjoy kids being in danger mm. uh not a not a trope that i'm interested in Fair. Fair. Try the periwinkle blue. Periwinkle so what blue. was your favorite part? What What is the favorite part that you watch for every time you watch this movie? Beth? Oh, well, I'm, no, what I mean is if I catch it at different points during the movie, I'm going to have a part where I'm like, hang on a second. This is coming up soon. All right. Uh, well, so I, out of that list, out of that short list, what's the high point? Which one is your favorite part of this movie? All right. So number one, how dare you? Number two. <laughs> I would say there, there's a number of times I really laugh at the the smart things he does in this. One of my favorite early on uh, is Bricktop when he kill kills the one guy and then kills the other guy who turned him in and is looks at the fighters in the ring and are like, "What the fuck are you two stopping for?" They just watch two guys get murdered right there and they're like, "We're sparring." I find that one funny. Just another Wednesday at the gym. Yeah, Dude, right. By far, the Sonia and I were laughing out loud when the three cars all intersect with each other. They have that conversation about milk, throw it out the window, makes the other car get in a car accident. The dude gets out and he's walking in the scene with a bag on his head. And they're like, is that? And then the other guys hit him. Mm -hmm. and like the oh it was just so much in the dialogue as it's happening everyone's confused about their own little part yeah the fucking guy's got a sword through him when the smoke clears and they're getting out of the car (laughs) yeah i love that he kept drawing out blades and they kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger (laughs) he's got a proper one full on katana Yeah. yeah that was pretty good the the guy with the teeth like Mm -hmm. the deaths in this movie (laughs) where he got shot what seven times or something and then just kills the guy who with that sword and then later that one dude just gets scared shoots him one time by accident it kills that's uh yeah that's also one of my favorite scenes when the he wants to get the dog open it up yeah, and they dude just can't do it. So he grabs the gun, it just shoots everywhere. Yeah, poor <laughs> bullet tooth Tony. Oh man, dude. Yeah, probably my favorite was uh bullet dodging Boris. My favorite scene was the bullet bullet tooth Tony <laughs> killing you. bullet dodge to Boris. Yeah. Just you miss what? he had to actually stop and yeah. he's like <laughs> almost that time. Yeah. <laughs> Got throwing bullets down the hallway. I would fucking die already. One of the parts I liked about that scene too was pull your socks up. I'd never heard that before. Uh huh. 
And uh, I was like, why the hell did you say that? And then I got it. <laughs> and then, I love it when he called I out what it. was on the, he's like, based on his little monologue about their, their gun saying replica on the side. Right. Yes. Shriveled <laughs> balls. Yeah. yeah. So, See, so many, so yeah. many call outs of this movie call me back to scenes that were done better in Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Right. Right. I, I feel like some of those scenes, those moments were just more like more ball punch in that movie mm -hmm. than they were in this movie. Like yeah. this movie had it, but the drama of uh, Bricktop walking in is they're trying to carry a body. Right. And then his little monologue about cutting it up and all that and walks back into the other room and the room's covered in plastic. That was good. Yeah. I I that really love that. You know, do you know who I am? And they're like, the one dude's all, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really love that. Do, anything with the Pikes, uh, always fun. I don't know why. I find all that stuff to be a lot of fun. And then, yeah, yeah. Uh, Benny Jones, Bullet Tooth Tr Tony, whenever that his whole segment is, I think, my favorite part of the movie. I really like that actor. I, I yeah. like I like most roles that, that he good. reprises. Yeah. And he does a good, I feel like he's pretty, he's got a lot of range without being obvious. And a lot of people say he's formulaic and he's the same character from one movie to the next. And maybe, but I don't know. I really like that guy. Like that character. No, I like the the actor. He always I always like the character of whatever I always like whatever character he's playing in whatever movie he's in. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I don't know if that he, he just gravitates towards the roles that are written well for him or what, but like that guy a lot. Probably. You guys I mean he, he was a pro soccer player before he got started getting casting roles. Right. Do you guys remember him in X-Men? I'm the juggernaut, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> that was so uh, funny. That was the worst <laughs> one. And out of character for him as an actor. Like he, he yeah. typically and, play and roles. Like he's not a small guy, but he they made him look a hell of a lot bigger than he is. Yeah. Yeah. Not not a juggernaut sized dude. No. Hey, when you think of this movie, do you also think a little bit of Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? Because I do. Uh, I don't, but you know, fun kiss, fun kiss, fact, bang, bang. I hardly ever think of Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. But that's a damn good movie, too. Also Not British. Bad. Similar kind of colors on the... the I, I always think of Blockbuster when I think of movies, and I think of like what did the DVD look like on the shelf. Mm -hmm. These movies looked very similar. Yeah. Um, they had like a similar kind of casting style. Um, they were definitely not the same movie, but around the same time frame. And God, I, do you guys remember when you used to have to walk through a video store? Yes. And I do. look at I know. the covers so far I'm of with a you. movie and read yep. the synopsis on it to decide if you wanted to watch it. Dude, you, you pause for five seconds on something on Netflix and you're watching the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like we're getting, right. these kids nowadays got it Life so easy. Changed. Life has changed. Four dollars. Get home. Pop that movie in the VCR. Realize you got to rewind it. Get that done. Popcorn's cold. Start it, and it's a shit movie. Popcorn's cold because popcorn Ugh. stays hot for a long time. <laughs> Do you got how long Here's it takes to rewind a movie? Be kind, rewind, motherfucker. By the time I Good started, movie. I started working. VHSs were gone. But if I recall correctly, didn't weren't you there for the transition from VHS to DVD? The end of it, yeah, I sure was. Yeah. Wait, I want to just talk beta for a minute. Or laser disc. Can you talk beta for a full minute? What about laser disc? No, you can't really can't talk beta for a full I'll minute. Talk <laughs> I remember uh being so into clerks. And hearing that he had an alternate ending on the laser disc that I, I considered buying the laser disc to try and get to watch it at somebody's house who had a laser disc player. Laser discs were just giant friggin' record size DVDs. They were cool yep. though. Yep. You guys remember Blu-ray? <sighs> <laughs> 
Nope, never heard of it. What's that? <laughs> so back to the movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matthew Vaughn, producer on this. We don't talk about producers a lot, but Matthew Vaughn's pretty well known now. Uh, Kick Ass, Kingsman, Layer Cake, some of the X Men, uh, the revamps. He pretty pretty important action director of the last twenty years. Uh, pretty sure Wanted. He had something to do with that. Remember Wanted with James McAvoy and Angelina oh, Jolie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I enjoyed that. It was way over the top, but it was a fun little bubble gum flick. Wasn't wasn't that the one where they could flick bullets? They could round yeah, yeah, they could yeah. yeah, they could curve it. Curve That's it. Doing so. so like I loved the concept of like, oh, if you just throw the gun while you're shooting it, then it'll just change the way of the bullet. And that's, but that's such fucking stupid bullshit. It's Creed's favorite movie from The Office. Is it? Yes. Ah, uh, you win this round. Yep, my favorite film. Ben wins uh, every Office round. His memory is better than mine. That's the only reason. It's true. Remember this? Yep. All right. Uh, I love that in the opening scene. <laughs> I love that in the opening scene. They're they're having a discussion about the Virgin Mary. Uh, that's actually an homage to Reservoir Dogs, where they're talking about like a virgin. Right. Uh, that little scene and Benicio del Toro. Interesting role for him. Not his best, but you know. I, enjoyed I think him this was role. right. Wasn't this right around the he might have fucked Scarlett Johansson in an elevator time frame? I feel like that was that was right around this time. I think ben, you're the ben only knows, person that not marks both their careers with that intersection. Um, <laughs> I mean, Ben would know. Ben would know. every moment in time. Finger on the made. pulse. I've got my yep. Hollywood Wire has my personal number. That is funny as shit. Well, I mean, I know Del Toro like flirted with success and then dropped off the radar and then came back. I don't know if this was before or after, though. I think it might have been before. Like he was getting popular and then he disappeared for a little bit. He was. Yeah. When I think of Del Toro, the two movies that always stand out to me are your usual suspects where he's just like, I'll flip you. Because it's so freaking weird to me that he says, I'll flip you. And I've never fully understood it. And then Sicario, he's just so good. In yeah. Sicario. Sicario is a good movie. I'd like to rewatch that, actually. Fair. Fair. Uh, Sean Connery, early on, talk to about being brick top really interesting yep uh, i don't think that guy, would have worked as well the guy that was bricked up was perfect he was Agreed. absolutely perfect i loved Agreed. the size of his glasses too the, yes the, yeah the glasses the glasses made the whole and the and the dental health mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean greedy very big. oh it's hard to watch very british yeah like, Definitely. True. I remember a British friend of mine saying how much he enjoyed America's dental coverage when he came here to work. Nice. I, I, I always marveled, like for me, the scene that that character came into his own. Like he was kind of a bully and all that shit, but I didn't really get the feeling of him being a really like hoss until he walked in when those guys were trying to move that body. Yeah, and then got the little scene, and then in the middle of his little intimidation bad guy monologue, his cohort comes in and gives him tea, and then walks out of the other room like, like you came into our space, discovered us having a body. You want to sit down on the couch, intimidate us? This guy brings you some tea, and then they walk out, and the room's all covered in plastic. Like I mean, it was like oh. That kind of bad guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The for me when it clicked that like this guy's serious is when Turkish and his lackey dude have to go explain to him Told me. that they don't have their fighter anymore. And mm -hmm. they go into that back room and the dog fights are going on and stuff. 
And when he says uh, that they, when he first tells them that they don't have their fighter anymore and everyone in the room gets quiet and it's just glasses guy is like, I'm sorry, you're going to have to repeat that. <laughs> and <laughs> you know that these guys are all going to kill you if he just tells them to. Yeah. Right. The uh, yeah, the British underground. It, I feel like uh, Pulp Fiction really changed like how we wanted our cr- criminal movies to be. Uh, and this was another big spin for that kind of stylized look that led to I, I don't know when Ocean's Eleven came out, but Ocean's Eleven made like a lighter version of this that didn't have so many murders. Right. <laughs> Sonya loves Usually. Ocean's Eleven. Usually popular movie. To this movie. How did she feel about this movie? It was probably the best movie that we have watched on this show, you know, that she's had to watch that she had not already seen. Oh, nice. She... she loved 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 this movie she was laughing way more than i was i think she liked it more than i did she also gave it an a minus but i think deep down she was more of an a i asked her (laughs) like i hadn't seen her enjoy a movie that much in so long that i said did you like this more than fifth element because fifth elements like her favorite movie and she said no but it's up there Interesting. And that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly enjoyed it as well. Uh, there were a couple of parts she wanted to rewind. We should have had the uh, the subtitles on. She really loved the comment that uh, penis has drive and clarity. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That little monologue was great. Yeah. One of, and you just one of my favorite things. Balls. One of my favorite things about having the subtitles on was that when they're talking in pikey uh it it just says mumbling when it's not supposed to mean anything yeah and there's sometimes where it it actually says what they're saying but you would have assumed they were mumbling because they you can't understand it Hmm. And and then there's other times where you can tell, oh, that was intentional. You were not supposed to understand that part, which is funny because I noted specifically when uh, Mickey, Mikey was talking about the caravan that he wanted them to buy for his mom. And it went and it went off into the he was consulting with his buddy and talking about the options and it said inaudible. And I distinctly after because oddly enough, with the subtitles on and listening to him, I was able to actually understand him more. And he said something about cushions like there was something in there flat out about cushions. Like he was talking about some some additional colors for the cushions and stuff. So it was funny. I, the first person that's ever going to argue that they understood more of that guy's speech. <laughs> With the subject and the subtitles. Yeah. How'd you guys feel about Jason Statham in a non transporter like role? Yeah. As the guy who avoids fights, no and- jump kicks. I've always preferred him in these type of roles. I think he delivers on these roles really well. Some of his lines were fucking great. Did you see Hobbs and Shaw? <laughs> Yes. Shut yeah. Up. What'd you think of that? <laughs> not, not, I mean, it had some moments. Come uh, on, dude. It's so it, ridiculous. It, I watch those movies now. Like I watch cartoons. I know, but those, the, the, to me, this actually highlights the point that I'm making is Statham's ability to come on scene in that absolute idiocy and drop a line with any credibility is just a, a, an incredible amount of chops to his acting ability. And I feel like his delivery was spot on for this entire movie, way in line with the setting and the pacing. And it just like, this is my life. Like the, the whole card scene where they're, he's sitting there and he's playing solitaire and friggin' Tommy is just adding, why are you not freaking out? 
uh, we get murdered before we leave the building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's just like, look, this this is where our life has brought us to, and it is out of our control. <laughs> that was a good British accent you did there, Joe. Uh, really? Hobbs and Shaw, we've talked about it before. We, I watched the whole thing too. It's like watching cartoons. That movie sucks. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, I agree with Joe. Eight hundred million dollars. Yeah, good for them. <laughs> People will just keep feeding that shit movie machine. Yeah, they but, did. Uh, Sharknado eight. Enough said. <laughs> Enough said. Um, I thought I agree with Joe. He was perfect for this role. It was funny. Um, I when I saw him on screen, he he was like skinnier than he is now, and he's got hair. He almost looks different, like a different guy. But you can tell it's him. Mm-hmm. One of his name is still Jason Statham, and it sounds just like him. Right. Also, yes, the voice is a match. Yeah. My, I'm not least... so sure about the color though. What was your guy's least favorite part of the movie? Uh, you know, just a fun, fun little thing before that. I remember playing this movie for Priscilla's mother's mother, Priscilla's grandmother on her mom's side. And I thought she would enjoy it a little bit, but got done. and was like, so what'd you think? She's like the, the best part is the song that's playing to show that the credits have started. Uh, I always find that kind of funny. Oh, we didn't talk about music in this. The music. Oh yeah, the soundtrack. Phenomenal. That's my final note. Soundtrack's great. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Okay. What I did not like about this is I just had so much disbelief in Brad Pitt's ability to knock out all those enormous guys in one punch. It was just like, ah, oh, come on, the movie's so good, but. Can he just try a little bit harder than just one punch every time? It's ridiculous. His hands were literally made of concrete. I would disagree, man. I mean, they did. They gave a little bit of background for it. Him being the championship bare knuckle fighter in the gypsy community. Whatever. I've watched UFC. That shit just doesn't happen. Have you watched the bare knuckle fights? They're bare knuckle in that shit. No, they're you know not. No, they're not bare knuckle. They got they're they're oh wrapped. It's not <laughs> the same. <laughs> they're wrapped in that. Is the same level of force is hitting the jaw. It might not be cutting your jaw open because it's got something else on there, but I believe it. No, I've seen it was, it was almost like you knew a little bit of judo in there to get momentum. And then he just knows where to find the button. What are you talking about? Brad Pitt was on the high just at this point in his career. Like rock that. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was, he, he, he sought out Guy Ritchie for this movie after locked stock. And this may have even actually let's been make a, it again. A low what? point in his career. I feel like this was, what? Similar. he was just coming off a of fight club, bro. I, but I don't feel like, I mean, this, I feel like this movie got more traction because of him. On yeah. its own quality. I mean, he had some of his highest amount of juice yeah. ever during this time. The Taichi Toes is home. Ah, oh, sure. And uh, my worst part that this show has to end. <laughs> like, subscribe, <laughs> click the bell. Ben is sad. Oh.